After months of speculation, Apple will officially unveil the iPhone 7 tomorrow. We kind of know ex almost exactly what this device is going to look like. I think that it may actually be Apple sanctioned leaks to kind of get people used to some of the things that we're going to see this year, notably the headphone jack removal and a similar design to the iPhone 6S. That kind of makes sense. Um, I've spoken about the iPhone 7 twice already in previous videos. I'm sure you kind of have seen a lot of the rumors already. I'm going to give a final recap today of the iPhone 7 and Apple Watch 2, and uh, tomorrow we'll finally see exactly what Apple has in store. So for the iPhone 7, we know the first thing is going to be it's powered by the A10 chip. It's going to be faster than the previous generation. That's what you see every year. Interestingly, we've seen some recent leaks of Geekbench scores which say that it'll be 35% faster than the iPhone 6S. Interestingly, that would also make it faster than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So the iPhone 7 would actually be more powerful than Apple's top of the line iPads if these rumors are to be believed. And certainly there's a lot that goes into that. Um, you know, the iPad Pro has a bigger screen to power, et cetera, et cetera. But just interesting looking at the raw score. The next thing, two gigabytes of RAM we'll see on the iPhone 7. The 7 Plus we expect to have three gigabytes of RAM. We'll need that for powering the bigger display as well as some of the camera features that we'll talk about in a second. 32, 128, and 256 gigabytes of storage. And it'll actually come in five colors. We previously talked about the space gray version switching to a space black version, kind of similar to what the iPhone 5 looked like. Seems like you'll now have your silver, your gold, rose gold, a matte black option, as well as a glass, glossy black option, which if I'm thinking back just spontaneously, the last time we saw a glossy black would have had to have been what, the iPhone 3GS in plastic? So three color options. The next thing, we had previously talked about waterproofing, water resistance, etc, etc. Looks like we're not going to have full-on waterproof, but this will be the first Apple smartphone that is water resistant. So it'll supposedly be IPX7 water resistant, so that it can survive some splashes, a brief submergence, which your you know previous devices would be dead for. It seems like this is what the technology that is actually in the original Apple Watch, the same grading of water resistance, which has actually been pretty good. I dropped my Apple Watch in uh, the sink, pool in the sink, and it worked totally fine after that. Uh, the other thing you kind of see that will get you towards that waterproofing are two changes. First, a sealed SIM tray, so water won't leak in that way. That's an opening to the internal of the device. And the other thing would be the headphone jack, which, as we've talked about several times, is going to be removed in the iPhone 7. So that's kind of how you're getting to the waterproofing. And in regards to the uh, headphone jack being removed, it looks like we'll have lightning-enabled ear pods shipping with the device. And some rumors are suggesting that in addition to that, you'll also have an adapter that'll go from lightning to uh, 3.5 millimeter, which would be nice for people that have expensive headphones already that they want to at least use for a little bit longer. Big change, camera tech. There's been rumors about camera tech in the iPhone 7 for a long time now. It looks like the iPhone 7, 4.7 inch version, will actually have, again, improved camera tech. Interestingly, we're seeing rumors of 4K video recording, which the iPhone 6S can do, but at 60 frames per second. So that initially gives me two thoughts. Number one, that's you know, industry leading first in class. I don't think we've seen 4K 60 frames per second before on a smartphone. The other thing is, thank goodness they're upping the storage capacities on these devices because that's gonna take up so much space when you're recording at that top setting. For the 7 Plus, pretty much confirmed now you're gonna have dual cameras on the back, dual 12 megapixel cameras, you know, various differences. Uh, one will be a telephoto lens, one will be a wide angle lens, so one will take more uh, wider shots, one will be zoomed in slightly, and of course it will have optical image stabilization. And you'll just have a very crisp image when that's merged together by the software. And again, that's why you need a faster A10 chip, and you need possibly that 3 gigabytes of RAM in the 7 Plus to power all of that. One interesting thing that I actually saw today was stereo speakers on the device, and what they're actually talking about is the earpiece gaining a speaker. So when you hold your device like this, you'll have sound coming out of the traditional speaker slot, as well as out of the front for stereo. So that's pretty interesting, actually. Uh, the other thing seen come is now confirmed pressure-sensitive home button. So instead of it physically moving, you're getting rid of that physical movement, that physical uh, component, which is prone to breaking, to an all-digital version, but it'll still use pressure sensitivity, you know, 3D touch-like technology to determine when you're fully pressing down to activate the phone, 
um, and stuff like that. And there also will be like a little haptic engine on it. So when you press down, you get some sort of feedback to simulate the feeling of touching down. Lastly, we, in the last video, I had touched on the displays. We're going to see improved display technology. So that means, well, you know, larger color gambit, hopefully a true tone display. Uh, but it's going to be the same resolution as the previous generations. We're not going to see, you know, a 1080p and 2K respectively on the 7 and 7 Plus like some people thought. Although, you know, moving forward in the future with the 2018 model, etc., probably going to see improved resolution moving down the line. So that's the iPhone 7. Um, is it boring to you? I mean, there's a lot of improvements built into it. It's in the same form factor, though, almost entirely to the success. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on that. Uh, you know, next up, I want to talk about the Apple Watch 2. This is the other big thing that Apple, the other big hardware thing that Apple is going to release tomorrow. Uh, quickly on specifications, obviously it's going to be faster, so an improved S2 processor. Uh, rumors suggest uh, that it'll have better waterproofing than version 1, which I previously, in this own video, mentioned that the waterproofing was pretty solid. It looks like we're going to have better waterproofing on this device. Theoretically, maybe, you know, you could swim in it, which is, you know, an exercise that a lot of people do. And some fitness trackers can go in the water like that. Seems like Apple would want to improve that for the Apple Watch 2. Bigger battery. A leak of parts suggests that the 42 uh, millimeter device is actually going to have a 35% larger battery. Not exactly sure how that translates to the smaller one, which previously had a smaller battery, but similar gains. Um, slightly thinner display, but that does not necessarily translate into a smaller watch itself. The thinner display can be, uh, can basically just give more room for the battery, which again, we talked about being bigger. And why do you need a bigger dis uh, battery besides just improving battery life, which I think is important, uh, but obviously Apple is adding in some new sensors, so a barometer as a sensor and a GPS. Uh, again, that is just to continue to improve upon, uh, you know, health tracking, to improve upon people being able to use this for their runs. If it has GPS, you're really independent from the iPhone with regards to that if it has GPS. Um, I think more sensors are the future. Being able to really monitor your health with your Apple Watch or your fitness tracker, whatever one you choose, is the future of wearables. Certainly, these two sensors uh, you know, are critical to the long-term success of the product line, but we're going to have to see more in the third, fourth generations to really start to get it at the core of being able to really track your health as a full unit uh, from your device. Um, it seems like there are still some rumors about whether there'll be two Apple Watch models being announced, an improved first generation model uh, versus uh, and, and a second gen. It seems like moving into the event, I believe all stainless steel Apple Watch original models are sold out from Apple Online. Does that lead you to suspect that they'll have a cheaper price point for the original device or they'll have a slightly improved original version at a lower price point? Hard to say. We'll see tomorrow for sure. Um, and the last thing, you'll, you know, you'll see new Beats headphones. Apple owns Beats, as you know. It makes sense that they'll, A, release lightning-enabled Beats because now that's the standard they're moving towards, uh, as well as wireless ones. And, of course, they'll probably mirror the new device colors, i.e. that new matte black and glossy black. Uh, finishes on the device. So that is the final roundup of the iPhone 7 and Apple Watch 2. I feel like this entire year, 2016, I've been slowly talking about both these devices. I'd love to hear what you think about these. Are you going to buy either of them? Again, it doesn't seem like the Apple Watch 2 is going to be so significantly different than the original one. It doesn't seem like the iPhone 7 is going to be so radically designed, redesigned that it's enticing, but it does, it will be a lot faster and we'll have a very compelling camera option. So I'd love to hear uh, are, if you're interested in buying these devices and I look forward to speaking you, to you tomorrow with the official confirmation on these products. Thanks for watching.